Hi and welcome to another installment of Shooting Star. A few weeks ago, I spoke about bridal prep on a wedding day. Today, I will be spe speaking about group prep on a wedding day. When I first started, I had the luxury of shooting with different photographers to see how they worked. After seeing how different people worked on wedding days, I noticed that what worked for myself and something that I would enjoy would be to work with the bride and for JD to work exclusively with the groom. And if I had any other second shooter, that would be the same thing. Usually, JD has around 45 minutes with the groom and this is how a breakdown will work. When, um, when he first started, he didn't know he didn't have the luxury of working with other photographers, so I gave him a loose outline of sorts. Since then, he's kind of taken it and made it his own, so maybe this outline may act for the same as you, or you might think I'm talking trash, and if so, just ignore it. So, the first step to the outline would be to knock on the door and introduce yourself as Jasmine Starr's assistant photographer. Now, you don't have to say Jasmine Starr. Whoever you're shooting with at the time, make sure that you're introducing yourself as their assistant and using the other person's name. I feel like it's nice and it's proper protocol. Number two, introduce yourself to everyone in the room. Because by the time JD is actually meeting the groom, that's the first time he's probably meeting the groom. So he's not just going to walk into the room and just meet him. It's proper and very nice for him to get comfortable with the best man, the father of the bride, the father, brothers, cousins, whomever. It creates a very good environment and creates allies and teammates for the day. Number three, keep your photo gear away when you walk into the room. What this is signaling to everyone in the room is that you're not there to immediately shoot, nor are you there to set up post pictures. What you do is after you've made introductions, tell them keep doing what you're doing. By doing so, you're giving them the permission to relax and you're also giving them the permission to be comfortable. Now, in the same vein, if you told somebody, hey, just relax and continue doing what you're doing, Everyone would stand around and there would be this awkward silence, which leads me to point four. I asked JD to go into the corner and with the large photo bag, lay it down and pretend like he's getting out his photo gear. He already has everything that he needs on him. He already has all his cards reformatted, but by him turning his back or turning away from the group, it's giving them the permission to go back to what they were doing before. Drinking, watching football, scratching, whatever guys do in those rooms, he was there giving them permission to do that. I probably shouldn't have said that. Anyway, by him fiddling with the back, it allows him to fall back into the rhythm and then he can shoot 100% candid and photojournalistically. Number five, which moves us into detail photos. Now what was happening was that when I was putting together um, album layouts, the bride had this overabundance of detail photos of her preparation and the groom didn't have so much so. So I made a list for JD to keep as a mental reference point. Now maybe you might find value in that too. Now I broke this into three separate sections so that's easier to digest. We broke it into stylizing, prep, and lifestyle. Under stylizing, the first point, the thing to remember would be to stylize the suit or the tux the same way that you would stylize the wedding dress. Make it look nice, put it in great light, and actually see if you can stylize it away from any sort of closets or hanging or any sort of mess in the room. Two, I want to take pictures of tie, cufflinks, the clip, jewelry, belt, flasks, groomsmen gifts, anything that is going a part of that day, but he goes in with a mental checklist of the things that he needs. Three, stylize the shoes. I ask him to stylize the shoes away from the bed, away from tacky carpet, anything that, how he would stylize a, bridal's Louis, uh, a bride's Louis Vuitton would be the same way I want him to approach the groom's shoes and what he's wearing. Point number four, if the groom has written handwritten vows, make sure that you get pictures of the handwritten vows or him actually writing the vows as they're actually taking place. And the fifth and final point would be to take a picture of the bride's gift if, he, if that is applicable in that situation. To take a picture of it in the bag and if it's possible to see if the groom is willing to take it out and get a picture of that, do that. Next section would be prep. Now, uh, point number one, the groom stylizing his hair. We have tons of pictures of the bride getting her hair and makeup done. Let's make sure if we can do the emulate the same thing for the groom. Two, tying his tie. Three, having a groomsman or the best man fixing his tie. Now again, these are not posed photos, but this is usually how it's coming down and I make sure that JD has everything as it's going down. Uh, for a groom, the groom putting on his shoes. Now, we went through stylizing prep, now let's move into lifestyle. Lifestyle would be the groom hanging out with his friends. This is them just doing whatever they're doing, but at the same time, can you sim simultaneously take detail photos? So if, say, the guys are drinking around, like sitting around drinking whiskey, get candid photos using maybe the 85 in a hotel room, which would get detailed shots of them just hanging out, looking a little candid, photo journalistic, making them look cool. And in addition to that, get photos of the whiskey bottle from which they are drinking, because that's a detail to that day. If, for instance, the guys were hanging out by the pool, making sure that you're getting 
pictures of a, their pile of sandals, beach towels, a row of beach chairs, whatever it, whatever it takes to tell the story of the day. Lastly, you want photos that portray the room having fun and looking cool. Those are the memories of his day and anything that JD can do to enforce that these are not posed photos kind of drives from that point. Now I went to Facebook and Twitter and asked for questions in regards to groom photos, so I'm going to get right into those. Okay, so Alan Anderson asks, do you have advice on how to coach the groom for the first look photo? And I'm going to tell Alan, I'll tell everybody else, I actually don't give any advice and I don't pose that. I simply put him in a position or tell him where to stand and I'll let him know that his bride is going to walk to him and he has the option of turning around and looking at her as she walks towards him or waiting until she taps him on the shoulder or calls him from afar. So I don't do any coaching in regards to that. A true reaction is a true reaction. If it's not the best reaction, it's what his reaction was intended to be and I don't get involved with that. Adriana Moret asks, how much posing a groom... How about posing groom who isn't comfortable with posing? Well, the good thing, Adriana, is that my second shooter during groom prep specifically is not posing the groom. I think it's very difficult for a groom to be posed all throughout prep and then to go into formal po po formal photos and then be posed all over again. So two to three hours of formal posing on a wedding day would just not be fun. And I think it would result in a groom being so uncomfortable with that, which is why I specifically asked JD to take a hands-off approach so by the time he actually comes in for formal pictures, his mindset is he had a great time with his boys and now it's, you know, we're in time for formal photos. And I try to keep, make, keep them as quick as possible. Number four, Rini Nelson asks, how do you work in a messy environment when photographing a groom getting ready? Now, I asked JD this question, and where I said in the groom prep to kind of clear out space in the room, he suggested, for guys specifically, that guys would like to open closets and then they don't close them. So the quickest trick to making a messy room look mess less messy, specifically a hotel room, would to be closing closets. Pick up old shoes, um, shutting doors, closing closets, and finding great light within them. I found that a tip for myself would be to, if the room is so disastrously messy, because sometimes guys can be, would be to, yes, shoot the environment as it is, but then for myself to shoot it in a way that uh, omits that mess. So if the mess is on the bed or on the floor, I shoot photos from the waist up. It's a kind of trick to get around that. The last question from Twitter is Lauren underscore Marie underscore W asks, new ways to set up boys. I always end up with the same stuff. Boys stump me. Well, boys are a little bit tough, like always, but I think the suggestion that I've always said and will maintain to say would be to check out Vanity Fair, to check out Spin Magazine, to check out Blender. Looking at, oh, and also the J. Crew catalog. They have great poses for guys, and I think that it helps keep what I do fresh and a little bit cooler because it's nice to have that option instead of all the guys like standing in line or worse, handshaking. I hope this helps. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much and stay fabulous.